Well, this might be the first example of a video that I literally could not get out quick enough. It is a quick tips video for you friends and my social media accounts kind of exploded when I uh, when I posted this. I've been painting miniatures a very very long time but I've not really been posting them to social media for that long and so I was pretty surprised when painting a wing from a hive tyrant ended up being the most liked post I've ever had on social media. The tutorial was always going to be a thing that was literally the reason I painted the wing membrane, so I've got some quick tips for you today on handling those wing membranes. This will apply to, to dragons, to hive tyrants, to demon princes, to all sorts of things that you can paint. It's a really nice foolproof method. I've got a couple of little sort of spicy bits at the end as well that I can show you just to add on some extra detail to it. Uh, it also really doesn't take a long time to do, which is great, and I think this is something that's actually going to surprise a number of people, because when they looked at the picture on social media, a lot of folk thought it was a very complicated workup, and it's actually really, really simple. Okay, so first of all, I'm going for like ready fleshy tones on my wing membrane. So I'm going to base coat with Barrack Nar Burgundy here. But you're just going to want to pick a really vibrant base tone. And it is important that it's vibrant. If you can help it, also something that's transparent that doesn't have a white filler in it will really, really help you for this. And the first thing we're going to do is grab a mid-tone now and start to build up some horizontal stripes across the wing membranes, kind of following the contour of the membrane. Now, when I say a mid-tone, um, kind of the colour that you want it to read as, but a little bit darker. That's really what you're aiming for here, you know. So maybe if you wanted it to, like, read as green, you'd start with, like, a dark kind of turquoisey, bluey green, and then you'd maybe go for, you know, a sort of warpstone glow kind of medium green at this point. Um, in my case, like I said, I'm going with fleshy tones so we're using Bugman's glow here and you can see that as I've put these horizontal stripes on what I've done is just build up my layers of them and I'm really not being careful but I am just paying attention to maybe make sure that it's a little bit more solid towards the raised center of the membrane Okay, now I'm just going to step up to a lighter colour and do exactly the same thing, but just keep my lines a little bit tighter. I'm still being very free with my brush strokes here. I'm not really concentrating or being particularly careful or going particularly slowly, anything like that. It's very free form, very kind of painterly painting. Um, for my actual colour of choice here, I just mixed a bit of sunny skin tone into some Bugman's Glow because that's a, a highlight combination that I really like. And now I'm going to continue to build that up even brighter. Just, again, still doing the same thing, getting brighter towards the centre. And I actually want to take this to a point where it almost looks a little bit too bright in the middle. And the reason for that will become clear in just a second. Okay, so what I'm going to do is grab the undercoat colour, the darkest colour of this workup, and I'm going to mix a glaze from that. And initially, the first thing I'm going to do is actually glaze over the entirety of this membrane. And this is called a filter. Now, the one thing you want to be super careful of with a filter is just to not let it build up on the surfaces. You don't want to let it stain. You just want an even application of color. What you can do, actually, for applying your first filter is just pop this glaze into an airbrush, and that will give you a much more uniform filter. It will take a little bit longer to build it up, but it will work exactly the same. However, I decided to do it with a brush because I think that's how most of you are going to do it. And then from here, the objective becomes to use this glaze to just repeatedly glaze away the edges of each membrane into the little recess where it joins with the sort of finger bone bit. I don't really know what it's called. <laughs> And we'll just keep layering up those glazes and layering them up. And they don't have to take a long time to dry. People think that glazing is always a super slow process. But for something like this, you just do a quick tour around the wing, applying a layer of glaze to every transition, and then blast it with a hairdryer. And it's going to be ready for you to start again on one side and work your way across to the other side again. Really, really simple. And the point that we know we're ready to stop is where the transition from the undercoat colour into the mid-tone colour is almost blurred out completely it's almost disappeared totally that's when we know that we've glazed enough now as a little optional flourish you could add in some little veins this is just right in the tip of the brush i went with a bright color here and actually realized after the fact that that was probably a mistake if these are supposed to simulate veins as a couple of people pointed out on social media they probably should have been a darker color 
but a light colour in my head looked cool and that's why I went with it. It's always that, that weird juggle of what's cool versus what's right. And then another optional flourish that you can add is to just get like a really clashing colour. In this case, because I've got a sort of purpley burgundy base, I went with a really bright turquoise. And just glaze it as a chase line into all of the deepest, deepest recesses. This is just like panel lining with a wash. It's very, very easy to do. But the advantage is, because this is uh, sort of quite a transparent paint going onto a really dark paint, Instead of having to clean up any edges where you overspill, they actually just kind of create a little faded effect. It's really, really nice and really handy. And then there you have it. That's the end result. That's how I painted this wing membrane. Um, as I said, this was done specifically for the purpose of this tutorial because I wanted to provide a cool tutorial on how to paint wing membranes. And I was really not expecting it to blow up the way it did on social media. So thank you so much to everyone who saw this post on social media, gave it a like, gave me some feedback, that kind of thing. I really do appreciate that because it really helps me direct where I want to take my content. Anyway, this is supposed to be a quick tips video, so I will get out of here now and stop chatting your ear off. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Do remember that if you like the video, you can hit that thumbs up button, you can subscribe to the channel, and you can enable notifications. Also, if you really love the content and you want to support it, there is a Patreon campaign starting from as little as $1 a month. So, time to get out of here. Again, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.